Good morning, everyone. So great to be back with you this morning. Uh, my name is Zach Fowler. I am the children's pastor here at Mariner's Church. If this might be the first time you're joining us, I'm glad that you are joining us this morning. Um, before we start this morning, I just want to um, say a quick thank you to all the men and women who serve. As yesterday, we celebrated Independence Day. Uh, so I just want to say thank you. Uh, I know many of your parents um, are in the military or are serving or have served, and so I just want to say thank you. Uh, as we start today, I think it's perfect. Uh, today we're going to learn about prayer and what Jesus taught about prayer. So why don't we go ahead and pray to start this morning. Lord, we come to you now and we thank you for your great teachings um, on all things in life, Lord. And today we, we learn what you say about prayer and why it's so important, and how we should pray. Lord, I pray that you would be with us today. I thank you so much for this time you've given us. It's in your name that I pray. Amen. Okay, guys, so today we're talking about how Jesus taught us about prayer. Um, today's Bible story is in Luke chapter 11, and then also in Luke chapter 18. Um, so you'll be able to read different passages there. I want to read the Luke 11 passage for you today. Um, so we're going to read, starting with Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 12. It says this, Once Jesus was in a certain place praying, as he finished, one of his disciples came and said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said, This is how you should pray. Father, May your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. Give us each day the food we need. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't yield us into temptation. Or don't let us yield to temptation. Excuse me. Then, teaching them more about prayer, he used this story. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You said to him, A friend of mine has just arrived for a visit. I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out from his bedroom, Don't bother me. The door is locked for the night, and my family and I are in bed. I cannot help you. But I tell you this, though he won't do it for his friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever he needs whatever you need, because of your shameless persistence. And I tell you, keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For anyone who knocks, or asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Your fathers, if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. If you should know how to give gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This story is awesome. Um, and I remember growing up, Luke eleven nine was one of the verses I had memorized growing up. Um, you know, it says... Ask and you will find. Seek and you will find. Ask and you will receive, excuse me. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Luke eleven nine. And this story I think is so important for us because many times in life, in my life, I've prayed for things that maybe aren't important. And I've prayed for outcomes instead of praying for God to do it His way. And in these verses... Jesus tells us exactly how we should pray and what we should pray for. Uh, verse, verse 3, it says, Give us the food we need each day. I think sometimes, I know in my life, I've gotten, you know, where I just have forgotten or just have prayed, you know, maybe for a meal, and I don't think about that. And then I see these stories and pictures and videos of people all over the world who don't have food every day. And it really takes me back and makes me remember how blessed I am to have a meal every day. And so, um, you know, I try to always pray as I eat. 
I thank God for what he's given me. I thank, thank God for what he's provided for me. Even in those times when I feel like I'm struggling, I know the Lord is still going to provide. The Lord always provides. And so I want to encourage you guys that when you have a meal or when you have something in your life, to, to stop and, and thank God for it. Thank God for what he's given you and what he's doing in your life. Why don't we watch our Bible story video for this morning? Jesus had just finished praying when one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. So Jesus told them, when you pray, say, Father, your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves also forgive everyone in debt to us. And do not bring us into temptation. Then Jesus told them a story. Imagine one of you goes to a friend at midnight and says, friend, let me borrow three loaves of bread because a friend of mine has traveled to visit me and I don't have anything to offer him. The friend shouts from inside his house, go away, my family is in bed. I don't want to get up to help you. Even though the man does not want to help his friend, he will get up and give his friend what he needs because he asked boldly. Jesus told the story to teach the disciples about prayer. He said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Jesus asked, does any father when his son asks for a fish give him a snake instead? Or if the son asks for an egg, does the father give him a scorpion? Jesus said that fathers who are sinners know how to give good gifts to their children. God is an even greater Father. He gives the Holy Spirit to those who ask. Jesus told another story, a parable, to teach the disciples to pray without giving up. In a town was a judge who did not care about God or people. Over and over, a widow went to the judge and asked him to protect her from wrongdoing. The judge did not want to help, but after a while he said, I will give this widow what she wants so she does not keep bothering me. Jesus pointed out that the unjust judge did what was right because the widow did not give up. When people cry out to God day and night, will he ignore them? Jesus asked. No, he will quickly make things right. Jesus wanted his followers to have faith that doesn't give up. Jesus taught us to pray. Because of Jesus, we can pray to God as a father and ask for what we need. We can trust that God is good and loving, and we can count on Him to do what is right. Okay, Jesus taught us to pray. Because of Jesus, we can pray to the Father in heaven, and we can ask Him for what we need. We can trust that God is good and loving, and we cannot... And we can, excuse me, we can count on him to do what is right. This reminds me, last week I watched a movie called The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe. And in the movie, I'm not going to give away the whole movie, but in the movie there's a line that says, he's not, he's a good lion, but he's not a tame lion. And the, the, back, the context of that is that that's referring to Jesus. He's not tame, but he is good. God is good. And sometimes it's hard to see that when we're struggling or when we're having a bad day or when something bad or something really sad happens. It's hard to see that God is good. I can tell you, though, in my life experiences, God has always been good. He's always been faithful. And we just have to turn and trust in him. Um, our big picture question, as you guys know, is this, what did God teach when he was on earth? Excuse me, Jesus, what did Jesus teach when he was on earth? Jesus taught about God and about his kingdom. He taught us that all the scripture was about him. 
which is something I think we need to remember, that all the scripture that we read is true. All the scripture, um, it's awesome to see, to go back and read the historical context um, of where the scripture was written and what was going on in the time and how even something that was written 2,000 years ago applies to us today. Uh, something really neat is I'm actually getting to preach um, this morning <laughs> and, and during the service. And as I was reading and doing my studying, uh, it's awesome to see that something that the Apostle Paul wrote to the Thessalonians 2,000 years ago applies to us right here in Annapolis today. And that's the, the truth of God's Word, is that it's timeless. It's the number one most selling book in the world ever. It's also the number one most stolen book in the world, which is kind of crazy. It also, I mean, that just shows, though, sometimes my theory is if someone steals the Bible, that means they need it. They want to read it. And you never know where you can find Jesus. If you guys remember, we've been learning about our missionary in Canada and how he found Jesus. And he found Jesus in jail because someone gave him a Bible. And he started reading it, and then he planted a church in Toronto, Canada. Um, why don't we see now how we can pray for Kasavin and his church in Toronto? So let's watch our Missions Moment video. God changed Kasavan Belasingham's heart and turned him from a gangster to a pastor. You can be a part of Kasavan's ministry and the work of Fellowship Church Rouge Park in Ontario, Canada through prayer. Thank you for your faithful and sacrificial giving. That This is just one example of what God is doing in North America, in planting churches where there was no church in this community two years ago. Now there's a growing, healthy local church where God's word is preached and disciples are being made and people are being baptized. Pause and thank God for Fellowship Church Rouge Park in Ontario, Canada. Pray for the church to grow and for more churches to start. I met Kesavan and uh, whenever I, I, I tell him, like, you know, I want to be like you, he would say, no, no, you don't want to be like me, you want to be like Christ. We'd be so grateful if people can pray for Gajan and others like him, that they would know that there is the realness of Christ and pray that that would be a reality and that God would use our church plant as a means um, to bring that truth to bear in his heart. Pause and pray for God to change more hearts through Fellowship Church Rouge Park and that more people will choose to follow Jesus Christ. Okay, guys, so after watching that video, I would encourage you all to take time this morning to pray for our missionaries. Pray for the people who are all over the world sharing God's good news, sharing the gospel, spreading love to people. And we can do that right here in Annapolis as well. Um, there are a lot of ways that we can share the gospel. One of the easiest ways is just checking on people. Hey, how you doing? Texting people, reaching out. Hey, how can I pray for you? Uh, you were on my heart today. I just wanted to pray for you. Um, I can tell you that when someone texts me and tells me they're praying for me, it makes my whole day. Just knowing that someone is praying for me changes my whole outlook on the day. And I want to encourage you guys. It can change your outlook as well. Um, and then, you know, something as simple as a smile. A smile goes a long way. It's funny that they were talking about how to share the gospel and, and with a smile. I remember I was working uh, in college at the wellness center on campus where I went to school. And this lady came in and, you know, I, I always try to be really nice to everyone who comes in. And she told me, thank you, not for my customer service, not for what I said or did, but she said, thank you for your smile. And um, if you guys know me very well, you know that I'm 99% of the time I'm smiling. Uh, when I'm not smiling, people usually pick up on it pretty quick. And 
figure out that something's wrong, something's not going right, um, I want to encourage you guys to remember to smile. Um, you know, think about the story that we, we watched today and we read about uh, with, you know, with your parents. If you ask your parents for food, they're not going to give you a snake. If you ask your parents, you know, for something, they're not going to deceive you. And the, I love what Jesus said in the first part of that story. You know, I think about my friends. If I go to my friend's house and knock on the door at midnight and say, hey, I need bread or something, you know, I'm probably going to wake them up. They're not going to be happy. But what did Jesus say? Even if it's not for your friendship, if you keep doing it, if you're persistent, they'll give you what you ask for. So I encourage you that when you have something on your heart, to keep asking, keep praying. Not like don't, don't be, you know, asking for things that you don't need, okay? But when there's something on your heart that you know you need, make sure you ask for it. I want to jump in and to our key passage for this time, and that's from John chapter 15, verses 25 and 26, and it says this, I am telling you these things now while I am still with you, but when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and remind you of everything that I have told you. And that's John 14, verses 25 and 26. Um, I love it. We have to remember, and this is Jesus talking to the disciples, and he's telling them that the Holy Spirit would be with them. And we read that in Matthew chapter 28, uh, right before Jesus ascends into heaven, he tells the disciples, I'm with you always. And then he says, go and make disciples of all nations. And uh, we call that the Great Commission. And that's what we are called to do as Christians, is to make disciples. Um, I know now it's summertime and we have lots of different activities that we get to do in the summer. And so I want to encourage you guys today to pray for everything that is going on. Pray for your family. Pray for our country. Pray that God would show you how to share the gospel with your friends, with your family, with someone you might meet. Um, pray today that God would be the center of your life. Um, I know, you know, we sometimes get distracted by life. I do the same thing. I just want to encourage you all, though, that when you seem anxious or you seem distracted, that's the best time to stop and pray. Because when you pray, when you focus on the Lord, all of those anxieties are pushed away. Uh, Jesus takes our anxiety away. Jesus... Um, you know, he takes our, our whatever we might be feeling, he takes it. And um, even if we're having a great day, I encourage you to pray and, and thank God for the great day that you're having. Um, and in in First Thessalonians chapter 1, Paul says, I thank God for you every day. Because, you, you know, you, we pray for you every day. And I want you guys to know that I pray for you every day. I have a list of people that I pray for daily. And all of you guys are on my list. So I want you to know that you're being prayed for. I want you to know that you are loved. And I want you to know that I'm excited for the day when everyone is back together here at church. Um, but I love that we can still connect with technology. So I want to encourage you guys um, to pray every day, to keep asking, to keep seeking, to keep knocking, and trust the Lord in all that you do. Why don't we pray? Father God, we come to you now. We thank you for this great day. Lord, I thank you that we're able to pray to you openly, and we can pray to you freely. I, I ask, Lord, that you would be with each of these kids um, as they are enjoying their summer vacation. I pray that you would be with them and that you would show them the right things to do, Lord. And I pray that if they ever are anxious or if they have questions or if they're having a great day, they would stop and pray and talk to you every day. Uh, Lord, we love you so much. Thank you for this time together. It's your name that we pray. Amen. Okay, guys.
just have a great week. I can't wait to see you all in person soon. But until then, I'll keep doing these videos. I love being able to share God's news with you any way we can. Uh, have a great week, guys. I love you, and I'll see you soon.